The bell has rung on the last Apple release for the year. So far, we've got some impressive laptops and some not so impressive ones. New phones, watches, iPads, oh my. It's a huge amount of stuff to wade through. So today, let's talk about what is the best overall Apple ecosystem going into 2024. But before we jump into that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, iFixit. Best has a lot of different meetings for different people, so we do need to sort of define our terms up front today. When I say best, I mean in a general sense. This would be the best ecosystem for somebody that kind of has to do it all. Be that student, office worker, YouTuber, somebody that has a need of general power and capability, but not somebody that needs specific capabilities like a gamer, etc. This also won't just be, let's take all the most expensive stuff and put that in a list. That would be far easier. Maybe I should have just done that, but it would be more boring and far less useful. So let's hop right into the ecosystem with the heart and soul of this layout. The computer. Again, general power. I get it. Most folks don't actually need a computer. Today, I will not be recommending a single computer released in the latest M3 generation. Though it is a fine processor and one that I personally use in my M3 Max MacBook Pro 16, I think we can get more bang for our buck if we go for the last generation. Spoilers for a lot of the video, a lot of the things on this list can be picked up refurbished from Apple, stretching our dollar even farther. The computer I'm labeling as part of the best overall ecosystem is the M2 Pro MacBook Pro, either the 14 or the 16. Today I will be specifically talking about the 14 inch because you can get this computer for $15.99 refurbished from Apple, which is... That's crazy. I mean, that's the exact same price as the quote unquote budget M3 MacBook Pro 14, but you get so much more and it's not nearly as frustrating. This model will come with 16 gigabytes of unified memory, fixing one of the biggest hurdles that somebody is gonna have in going with a base model Apple computer. And in what's most important to me, this has the higher end chassis as opposed to that budget MacBook Pro body. I'm, I'm not gonna dig into my frustrations on that too much today. I made a whole video complaining about that body. So I'll leave that in the description below. Suffice to say the M2 MacBook Pro is the absolute cutting edge for both getting the most for your money, but also getting power and capability. Really the only thing you are missing here compared to say a high-end M3 Pro processor is the ray tracing. But that's more of a specific graphical need, and as Macs haven't yet become a standard for gaming, I wouldn't say you are missing that much. In use, you'll be able to do everything either an M1 machine or M3 machine could do, and you'll be able to plug in your existing home setup with a single cable. I love that. If there was a weakness of this particular machine, it is that it comes with 512 gigabytes of storage and not a terabyte. But as cloud becomes less of an added benefit and more of just a way the world works, I don't see this as much of a limiting factor. Personally, I still use one terabyte, but who, I don't really ever use it. I'm probably spending too much on my own computers. They do have refurbished models with that extra storage, but obviously it will cost a little more. And I don't know that you're really getting all that much. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. You can learn how to fix just about anything at iFixit.com. iFixit is your place to skip the materialism of holiday shopping and focus on giving gifts that are actually meaningful. iFixit is now offering a brand new essential repair bundle that includes their essential electronics toolkit, electronic cleaning bundle, and even limited edition stickers and patches. Real talk, we know how fond of stickers I am. You'll also get free shipping on orders over $80 using the code FREESHIP after clicking on the link below. Okay, next up we need to lower our blue bubble superiority over the rest of the world. And, and I'm, I'm actually kidding here. That's annoying and I hope Apple is forced to change this in the future. Either way, I do still think an iPhone is the best cell phone, but much like a MacBook, I don't think the latest model is the one to recommend here. Sure, the 15s are great, but they aren't that much greater than previous, and I think the 13 Pro Max is the single best value phone on the market and probably ever created. You can also get this refurbished from Apple for a pretty respectable $759 when it's in stock. Part of buying refurbished means you do kind of have to check back from time to time as they update their inventory. You might be able to find this for less on websites like eBay or Amazon, but personally, I like the reliability of Apple's return policy and that you can get Apple Care even on their refurbished tech. So you get all this, you save all this money, but it's still treated like it's brand new. The 13 Pro Max has the same incredible Pro Max display of the 14 and the 15 generations, minus some extra brightness. That is nice, but saving almost a third of the cost means I'm willing to put up with a slightly dimmer screen. You'll also get 128 gigabytes of storage. See my comments above on laptop storage, they apply doubly here. I've never even come close to maxing out 120 gigabytes of storage on my phone. The files are in the cloud, 
always on my phone. I store almost nothing directly on my cell phone. Audio quality is right up there. Battery life will stun you if you've never used a late model Pro Max iPhone. The only practical difference between the newest generation and the 13 generation is the connection. The 15 now uses USB-C while the 13 still has the older and badder lightning port. I do much prefer the USB-C on my iPhone 15 Pro Max because it simplifies my travel cabling. But do you really wanna pay almost $400 more to save yourself a cable? It actually makes me regret my own decisions when I say that out loud like that. Again, I've got a whole video extolling the virtues of the 13 Pro Max over the 15, so I won't belabor too much here. You can also check that video out in the description. Moving into audio, this year I'm gonna shake it up a bit. Previous years, I've given the audio crown to the AirPods Pro, but I've, real talk, I've had some frustrations with my AirPods Pro 2 recently, and I've decided to give them up. I've said this before, but when AirPods work, they're the best set of headphones I've ever owned. But when they don't work, they are the worst and most frustrating set of headphones I've ever owned. There is no middle ground in AirPods. They're either great or they're ugh. This year I took advantage of a sale and bought a pair of Beats Solo 3 over the ear headphones and I don't consider this cheating as Beats are owned by Apple. So according to the judges, let's go to the judges. Does that still count? Ding, yeah, it still counts, Gary, you know everything. Well, it still counts. Now the Solo 3 are an older set of headphones. Heck, they still use the micro USB port, which is literally the worst port ever made. And I almost returned them based on that alone. However, I've now used these for a couple of weeks, both traveling, working out, and just listening to music and watching some Downton Abbey. And for the $99 I paid, these are fantastic. They are very lightweight for over-the-ear headphones. They pack down to almost nothing, and that was a big point of frustration for me when I had the Sony third generation WH series of over-the-ear headphones. They get 40 hours of battery life, but most importantly, they are pretty darn comfy. Now, they were not comfy right out of the box. I had to stretch them out a little bit through use to avoid what felt like a death grip on my head. It did not feel comfortable the first time I put them on, and I really thought that was gonna be a deal breaker for me, but I really, really like these. They're easy to clean after riding my exercise bike. They stay on my head very well and reliably even when I'm running. Now I haven't run too much recently as I'm currently getting over an injury, but I have been able to get up to a half a mile again and that's been fantastic and the headphones worked great during that. The sound quality is very good for me and even the built-in microphones work okay for calls or Discord sessions. The only straight up brand new thing that I'll be recommending today comes down to the smart watch. There were years when I thought about not including an Apple Watch, but anymore, I no longer consider this a nice to have, but part of just what I use in my own personal tech system. And I do think they're now at the point where I could say, okay, you should probably have a smartwatch. So I will be placing the Apple Watch Series 9 in this system because holy crap, do I love mine. While I purchased and still have an Ultra 1 and Ultra 2 watch, I don't wear them anymore because I really prefer the smaller and more comfortable nature of the Series 9. You get decent, not mind shattering, but pretty good battery life. The extra screen brightness makes the whole thing so much easier to see when you're not in an office, library, or other place with a dark interior. The new interface included with watchOS 10 makes using the smaller display much easier. They didn't increase the size of the screen this year, but they reworked the interface somehow so that it's so much easier to use than previous models. It's comfortable, tracks workout, takes calls. It's everything about an Apple Watch, but even better and even newer. Not much else to say other than it's really good. And I think it speaks a lot for this watch that it's the only new thing placed in this ecosystem. Lastly, I am going to put a nice to have icing on top here because something else has recently come to the Apple refurbished store, or at least I've recently noticed that it was there. The Apple Studio Display. Yes, it's expensive, and yes, spec-wise, it doesn't exactly match up to other competing displays. And even at 1609 refurbished, it is more expensive than the MacBook I recommended at the top of this video. I get that budget-wise, it's not the best. But I did say this was best overall, not necessarily cheapest and not necessarily the most expensive. Something I found out recently is if you have an Apple ecosystem, it works perfectly. Not good, not great, but perfectly as a second display, especially as a vertical second display. I use mine all the time now, and because of how macOS operates with secondary displays, it's just Fantastic, you don't have to fiddle with any of the settings or anything. You just turn it vertical and it does the rest. This has totally changed how I work and play for my home office and you can get it even cheaper refurbished from Apple. Again, I don't think everybody needs this. I did say it's icing on top of the cake, not a whole cake that you need. And yes, we do all need cake. That's not, what, that's not even up for discussion. What, you don't need cake? 
so you can see yourself out. <laughs> so that's the 2024 Apple ecosystem I think is the best. What are you using into 2024? Or what would you build as the best? Let us all know in the comments below. And click here to see those specific videos about MacBooks and iPhones that I was talking about earlier. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.